Welcome to More with Miss Deshaun, live with Miss Deshaun, right here. I'm your host, Deshaun Moore, and we're getting ready to talk to a media guru, music artists, entertainers. I need you to get on. I need you to share this video. We're going to have a wonderful time tonight, a time talking to an amazing young man who's doing big things in the industry. He's been doing it for a while. Well, my special guest, again, is a PR powerhouse. He's an amazing publicist, celebrity publicist at that, who's worked with the likes of Rihanna, Death Row Records, so many more. He is, has uh, established himself as a crisis management publicist. That means that, hey, if you're getting in any trouble or you need some help, he's the guy to go to. He is not just a media publicist or a celebrity publicist. He is a producer himself. He's none other than Jonathan Hay. How you doing, Jonathan? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> now, are you in California right now? Where are you right now, if we may ask? No, I'm not actually. Actually, I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. Wow. So um, you're... Finishing, up a, finishing up a project. I appreciate your introduction. Very flattering. <laughs> Most definitely. Now, I had called you about an interview. Uh, little did I know, when I began reading a on you, Jonathan, I promise you, I almost fell out of my seat. I said, oh my gosh, did I really know who I was talking to? And I didn't, so forgive me. <laughs> so so I, I'm still learning the industry, but Jonathan, you, you've got to pat yourself on the back. You are a heavyweight in this industry and you're doing some amazing things. We're gonna talk about it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, a lot of years. And now it's kind of like, it doesn't even feel like it anymore. <clears throat> It almost feels like an assembly line. Yeah. You know, it almost feels like a, feels like a, a regular job, you know? Yeah, so. yeah. But you're doing what you love and you're doing what you're called to do. And when you do things like this and when you do it with a spirit of excellence and when you are successful, that's, that's what you're supposed to be doing. So thank God that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. So that's awesome. No doubt. And like right now I'm doing a project and I have, you know, some major artists on it. And it's gonna come out October 13th. I can't, I can't really say the name, but I mean, it's got some major rappers and stuff. I mean, and I'm, I'm producing like the whole, whole project. And a lot of these people are like my heroes, like people that I grew up on. And then it's you know mixed with you know some of the new younger cats relevant. But it's been really, you know, it's been really really cool to do the project that I'm doing right now. I love, I love more the production side than the than the publicity side. Yeah. Now, for those who don't know who you are, Jonathan, and that's really uh, not a good thing because they, they really need to know who you are. You kind of talked to us a little bit. Tell us about Jonathan. Um, wow. <laughs> so, I got started. I got started in the business, like, you know, just going to recording studios. Um, and then it just, I don't know. I got with a friend and he ended up selling three million records. And mm. I was just like in the, I was in the music industry. Just mm. one day, I'm just in it. Mm -hmm. You know, we messed up, something messed up, like so many different deals and so many different things. Of just being young and stupid. <laughs> you know, so that's how I got, that's how, that's how I got my start. And then I ended up in Florida, and that's how I got connected with um, the Rihanna project. And then that obviously went crazy mm -hmm. and you know with all the tactics that were that are still talked about to this day that that we did you know just because you're an unknown artist and we had no idea what we were doing was going to work you know mm -hmm. and then you know up until today just still doing you know like you mentioned death row records you know there's been sony music i worked with whitney houston i've worked on projects by Michael Jackson, like since he's passed, like his last uh, album on Sony, I was involved in that. Mm -hmm. um, Teddy Riley, you know, I mean, you name it, just a lot of a lot of different people that I've been fortunate to work with. Yeah. Now, Jonathan, you said something that was so key and I have a lot of music artists listening and entertainers and again, people who are who want to learn this industry. You said, you know, you did some stupid things, 
People don't realize that just because, you know, the, the road was bumpy doesn't mean that you're not going to make it. You just have to press through. What gave you the motivation to press through through all the, the craziness or maybe the, the decisions that you thought were not as wise? What, what gave you the motivation to keep moving to get to this level? from Public Enemy, he, he told me like eight, nine years ago, he really changed my life about how it is like, you know, they call it a game mm -hmm. because it's really, like, it's really like a game. It's really like, you know, a sports game and he would use sports analogies and it's just like, you know, you just want to win. You know, you want to get your, you know, your Super Bowl ring or your, you know, national championship or yeah. whatever it is. You just, you just want to win. So you're kind of driven by that, mm -hmm. by the, by the sport of it, at least I am. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, you know, that, 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 that's what it is. And there's so many, like, you can't predict how it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, cause you don't know how, what the media is going to respond to. Yeah. You know, you don't know what the news is going to respond to. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just a very, uh, very, um, you know, different. I don't know. It's fun. It's, it's, it's definitely a good yeah. Um, I was reading and again, we're talking to the music artists. So here's the thing about this industry. You have to be bold. You cannot be a wimp in this industry. You, you've got to jump in and take some chances. And that's just life. And uh, a lot of people don't want to do that. But you did that and look where it got you. So we're going to start off with this question, Jonathan. For those for those people out there who want to break into the music industry, and they're independent artists or they really may not even have the budget or the, the uh, even being in a location, what should they do first? How should they do this business? Well, you said it before the question that they, they have to be bold, mm -hmm. you know, and you need to have a story. Like so many people contact me and they think, you know, because they've recorded a song and they shot a video, mm -hmm. and it's so easy to record a song. You know, and it's so easy to shoot a video nowadays with technology. Like, back in the day, that was something. Yeah. You know, like, when you went to the recording studio, it was something. Now it's like, you know, people are recording from their homes and their cars, wherever, you know? Mm -hmm. So now it's just a totally different ballgame. So, you know, recording a song and, that, and then doing, shooting a video means nothing. And a lot of people are naturally entitled to their music, you know, so they think because they recorded it, somebody's supposed to care or they don't. Yeah. You know, and because there's so much music floating around, journalists are flooded. Their inbox are flooded with, you know, music submissions to get blog placements. Mm -hmm. You know, so you've got to come with a story. Okay. If you're going to break now, you've got to come with a story. Okay. It's all, about, it's all about the story. Because if it's not the story, then, you know, nobody is, uh, nobody's really going to post it. So, so if... That, that's what I like about producing. Is I like to produce songs mm -hmm. with the story and with the vision. I know, you know, that's going to get some fun. Wonderful. You know, yeah. I love the song, Not a Shame. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Well, so that's with um, Eminem's artist. We, it's, it's actually, we did a sequel. Crook and I, uh, King Crooked, you know, forming in Crooked Eye. He's in the group Slaughterhouse. He signed to Eminem. We did the first of shame probably uh, four years ago in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and the, his fans like loved it, and it was played on the radio. Yeah, um, a lot on Shape Forty Five Eminem's radio station, mm -hmm. and Eminem heard the song. Eminem loved the production. He broke down like my drum samples. You know, it was just it was amazing. You know, because I'm a hip hop head, and Eminem is obviously one of the all time greats. Mm -hmm. And so earlier this year. In April, you know, Crook was, uh, he'd been sober for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the song is talking about, to a shame. And at the end of the song, you know, there's a voicemail from a friend of mine, because my daughter and I were involved in a home invasion. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just a real tragic situation. So we put it all into the music. Yeah. You know, and the singer, Mike Smith, who's my partner, he was going through some things. And, you know, the music just has a lot of emotion. Yeah. yeah. And I love it because it's real. As I, I, I tweeted on your <laughs> your Twitter page, because when I listened to the song, it told the story. It told the story about someone who is sober now, but 
you know, there are things that go along with that. There's uh, the temptation. There's there's the, the whole story of I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to do this. That's encouraging to someone who is trying to get over alcoholism or whatever they're dealing with. So I, that story, I mean, that song really resonated and it's, it's awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh, uh, I'm going to go back to our music artists because you do something that's very unique and I'm sure a lot of publicists do this celebrity publicists, you know, they, they, this is a part of the job, but you also step in when there is a crisis with their reputation and you kind of clean up the mess, Jonathan, or you create the mess. <laughs> um, can we talk a little bit? Can we talk a little bit about that? It's a little controversial, but Hey, you did what you have to do to, to get the artists to a level that they need to get to. So can you expound on that? It's funny because I do, I do create the messes. And I, I don't mean to like right now, situation, I mean, you can Google it, you know, involving Drake mm -hmm. and, so and his crazy mother, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's in October, it's like, all of a sudden I got involved in the situation and it just got so much bigger because I was, I, it was compelling content, you know, that I started sharing with the media mm -hmm. and it just blew up and then it's like I'm doing crisis management, but what you said for problems that I created. But I don't know. I think it's one of my favorite things to do, mm -hmm. and I get a lot of cool. I got a lot of calls about it. Yeah. Um. It, it, it's it's wild. It's because you know, honestly, like I can't do that very well in my own life. And that's what they say: good people are cops. You know, it's like you know, good teachers or good whatever. You know, they do a lot better on somebody else's than their own. But yeah. It's like he's like I'm involved in all these personal crisis all the time so I think it makes me possibly good at that field you know Rolling Stone has recognized me you know as a crisis management expert mm -hmm. so I mean it's been you know it's fun I mean that, that's something I really like because it's challenging and it's like you know you're like totally in the game you got to focus because all sides are coming you know usually coming at the client who's in a crisis you know yeah and, and you know what Jonathan it's amazing and I hope people get the message in this and I try to find the positive side of any situation here's the deal crazy stuff happens in our life Jonathan that's just that's a given you know things happen whether we inflicted it or whether it just happens but just because it's bad doesn't mean that it's going to end up being bad for you it may be the very thing that catapults your career that catapults and puts your name out there so however it happens Jonathan you got you got the message you got the revelation hey I'm gonna capitalize on this because it may bring my artist to the forefront and it did that for Rihanna it did that for her absolutely yeah no yeah <laughs> well now Jonathan I want you to kind of talk about we we talked about breaking into the music industry for someone who um uh, contacts Jonathan what is Jonathan looking for and how can you tell if a music artist is actually ready to have a publicist in their life because a lot of times they, they make the CDs they make the music Jonathan and I said this before in my last interview but you have all these CDs in your garage 5,000 boxes or whatever you had no plan you had no marketing or branding advice counseling but you want to get out there but you, you you've never done any of the business so, when they contact you, Jonathan, how do you know that th this is someone that is marketable that you want to invest in? You just kind of, you kind of, I can usually tell within a, you know, a minute or two. Mm -hmm. You know, by usually how they contact me, you know, usually by the way they write. I might just check out their social media and catch their love. You know, because they usually have all their social media and email. Mm -hmm. You know, check it out. And if it's something, you know, if it's something that grabs you, you know, it it, uh, it just you know it grabs you. you know? Yeah. You can't really you can't really explain it. It's just a feeling. I'm doing a couple projects right now like that that you know really really grabbed me. Like the one project that I'm producing. Yeah. You know, it's got me. It's got major people on it, and it's got that it factor project. You know, I've, I've got a few new artists that I'm really messing with and they have that it factor, mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah, you know, I, I love doing that. I love developing something. I love working on something. Mm -hmm. I love creating the story, but it's patient. The artists now, 
no more so impatient because everything moves so fast. Mm-hmm. Like you've got to, you know, you've got to kind of like what you were saying. You got to build your infrastructure. You got to have a business plan, mm-hmm. and you've got to have a budget. And if you don't have a budget, you've got to have a great story. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have a great story, then you got to figure out a story. You know, mm-hmm. and you've got to, you know, you got to entertain people. You know, and you got to put on. You know, your costume, people go to work every day, mm-hmm. and they've got, you know, they wear certain clothes or whatever is required for their job. The same thing with the music industry. You know, you got to put on your outfit, you know, you got to go to work. Yeah. And that's what it is. A lot of people take it so serious as, as something else, and ego and pride gets in the way, but, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's about, you got to, you got to death the self and just, you know, not about pride, all about team. Yeah, I like what you keep saying. It is about story. There are some very intriguing people um, who want to hide their stories, Jonathan, for whatever reason. Maybe it's, you know, something in their past or something they feel like, you know, would not be uh, applicable to their, you know, who they are. But I feel that when people are more transparent and they are able to communicate their feelings, whether it's pain, hurt, love, whatever it is, in a song, and they're boldly doing it, that, to me, it makes me respect them more, and it makes me want to listen to them and to hear them. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Yeah. Emotion. Yeah. Fine, maybe. You know, mm-hmm. just vibe. You know? Absolutely. So, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like a real different, you know, it's like a real different a real different spot for me too and it's like I have a I have a 15 year old daughter and a 16 year old daughter and that's crazy you know what I mean mm-hmm. so like as a man and a, you know I'm a single a single dad so as a man like that's crazy like that's like last month you, I, I, you know my, my daughters and I went to Florida mm-hmm. and one of my daughters brought a friend it was three girls like I was ready to jump out of the balcony you know, I was like, this is absolutely crazy <laughs> to teenage girls. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's been my biggest challenge. But they help me because they keep me relevant and, like, younger. Because it's like, you know, when I do a project, I want to do, like, you know, KRS One and MC Light. You know, like the old school cats that I grew up on. But they're like, no, Dad, you need to get, you know, so-and-so. <laughs> Bruno Mars. You know, like all, you know, all the young cats, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I listen to them. Yeah. We've got like a little family business thing going on, so that's good. So, you know, I, you've got to keep younger people around, you know, because that's, you know, that's honestly where a big part of the demographic is, you know? Yeah. I love that, Jonathan. And that brings up my next question. There are some people out there. Uh, Again, I'll go back to our music artists and our entertainers, those that want to make it in the music industry because they're listening. Some of them feel like, okay, I have a family, Deshaun, and I'm obligated to my family. And I kind of feel guilty getting out here trying to do this music entertainment thing because, you know, uh, I got a family. And actually what you said, Jonathan, it's a plus when you have a family or you have young people. They keep you young. They keep you relevant. But how do you move past that guilt uh, and the the, the 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 feeling you get because, you know, you have to jump into this industry. You have to do it. How do you move past that, Jonathan? How how are you able to leave your daughters to do what you do and feel okay about it? You know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I like that answer. You're honest. Know, it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's sacrifice. It's, it's tough. It's difficult. Yeah, it is. It is. And, you know, and then really, like, the answer, you know, that so many people say is, you know, well, I'm doing this for my kids. And it's like, I don't know how true that is because that's, you know, because you're also doing it for yourself. You also have something else to prove. You also have, you know, a message or a purpose or something that, you know, a path that God has laid out for you. If you, you know, follow that, you know, um, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm so happy you mentioned that Jonathan, because faith has to be at the forefront of what we do, what you all do. It, 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 it has to take faith because 
for you to get out and do what you're doing, Jonathan, it has to take faith and it has to take faith in God. I'm sorry. It does. No, no question. Yeah. No question. And, you know, honestly, like, the, you know, I struggle with that. I struggle with, like, you know, because I grew up, you know, in a, in a very strong Christian household. You know, I grew up in church. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, you know, you get involved in the music business and you let your guard down. And, you know, next thing you know, you're not really paying attention to the content you're putting out. And, you know, you just kind of run wild with it. You know, you kind of, you know, make excuses. I make excuses like, well, you know, if I was working for a, you know, soda company, you know, I wouldn't tell that, you know, if you keep, you know, advertise, like, if you keep drinking these drinks, you know, it's going to be bad for you, whatever. Like, you know, so I would just, you know, promote the music and not even really pay attention to, you know, the damage that it can do. Yeah. And so... Like, I've been, honestly, I've been running wild for, like, the last year. Uh, the, I mean, the last few years. Um, my content has gotten really, really, some of the stuff I promote is really not at all what it should be, especially with having, especially with having children. You know what I mean? They yeah. listen to that stuff. It's embarrassing. It's like, oh, my gosh, you know? Yeah. But, like I said, it was, like, God came in and intervened. And um, with my wife, like, that's, like I was telling you, like, my daughter and I, you know, we were involved in a home invasion. Mm-hmm. And uh, that changed everything. That That's when I was sitting there, like, I was duct taped, you know. Mm-hmm. And they had guns to us the whole time. You know, the people have been arrested and all that other stuff. But, mm-hmm. you know, I was thinking the whole time, like, this is the type of music that I promote. Violence, guns, all this other stuff. And it really... You know, God really broke that down, you know, really changed my way of thinking and really like, you know, like, wow, you know, I've got, I've got to make some changes and some adjustments. So, you know, I focus on, I'm really focusing on like positive music and positive things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Jonathan, it's amazing how God works because before any interview or before I do anything, I'm always asking God, what's my next move and who to interview? And what I'm learning, Jonathan, although we are in this industry, the Bible says we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And sometimes God has to position us in a place that seems crazy, that seems like this is so counterintuitive or counteractive to what I believe. But at the end of the day, Jonathan, God has a purpose for what you're doing. And at the end of the day, it will be fulfilled if you say, you know what, God, just like you were honest, this is crazy. I know what I believe. I know who you are, but he is going to fulfill something that only Jonathan can do at the end of the day. So you keep God forefront, no matter what the craziness is, Jonathan, it's a purpose in what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> so awesome. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, Jonathan, I know you talked about an amazing project that's coming up that you can't tell us about, but can you encourage our music artists out there who feel like they cannot get to that level, that they'll never, ever have that Jonathan Hay celebrity publicist in their corner. Can you kind of encourage them and let them know, hey, you keep it moving, you can do this? Absolutely. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Of mm-hmm. course you can. Because I, like, came literally, like, I, I, I risked it all. You know, yeah. like, I didn't, I quit going to college. I quit, I quit everything. I lived in my car. I slept in my car. Mm. for a long time and like when we would travel to Los Angeles at first you know we'd sleep in rest areas like over New York and you know literally just living out in the car until you know because I just I just knew I just had you know I felt like this is what I was supposed to do and Mm -hmm. it keeps growing and growing and growing you know but like this new project that I can't really you know talk about um, it's going to be out you know second week of October like it's it's loaded with people and like they let me produce it exactly the way I wanted to and it's so I got crazy like I've always wanted to have like a choir and all these different voicings and English accents and musicians so it's really really crazy because mm-hmm. you know Michael Jackson I'm going off on a side totally like side road here but anyways because like Michael Jackson when he did Thriller like, if you listen to Thriller you know Michael was just a kid then which became the biggest selling record of all time mm-hmm. You know, not a kid like the Jackson 5 kid, but, you know, 
20, 22, 23 years old, and here is this Thriller album, you know, which changed the world. But if you go back and listen to Thriller and really study it, you know, it's produced by Quincy Jones. Mm -hmm. And he has, like, all these live horns and live music, and it's very, it's very contemporary in a sense, but Michael brings that use to it. So that's why it's got, you know, so that's, you always got to, you know, keep, you know, if, if you believe in yourself, you know, something is going to happen. Yeah. And it's like, I've had this, you know, idea of the sound, you know, that I wanted to do, and it's like happening. You know, it's kind of like a mix of Quincy Jones, you know, versus Rick Rubin. Wow. You know, and it just, it just, it just takes, it just takes persistence. I know I went off on a little tangent there, but it just takes persistence and, you know, never, never giving up. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, Jonathan, my guests are, uh, some of them are just popping on and they're wondering wondering who I'm talking to. This guy right here, you can see him on my screen. He's a celebrity publicist, Mr. Jonathan Hay. He is the guru, music mogul, producer extraordinaire uh, of the music industry. He has worked for Death Row Records, Sony Music, Rihanna, uh, you name it. He has been there and he's a crisis management publicist as well. That means that, hey, he can get you out of anything and he is definitely a, a, a powerhouse in the industry. So if you are listening, you are privileged because we are being very privileged to hear from him. Okay, Jonathan, I had to get that out because they're asking. Now I want to ask my audience, are there any questions that you all want to ask Jonathan? Or if you just want to say hey, because you're talking to a celebrity yourself. So this is your chance to say hey to a celebrity. <laughs> so while they're, while, they're, while they're posting Jonathan, how can someone, I know, well, let me back up. How do you uh, uh, reach out to a prospect artist, music artist, or how can they reach out or contact you? All my information is out there, and it's like, I, I've been trying to, I've been kind of toning that down, too. Yeah. I used to, like, really, like, be visible as far as, like, putting my phone up. Because if there's, if, if somebody's with a crisis, you know, having a crisis, you want to be able to be able to be reached and not, mm -hmm. you know, searching all over for the crisis, you know, management person. So, it's like I put my name out there for clients. So, like, I have the same number that I have for 13 years, but I added a different number, mm -hmm. you know, the number that I'm calling you on, because it's like that phone, you know, just blows up all the time, text messages, calls. So I'm kind of like, you know, getting out of there. But I don't know, you know, my email's out there. Email me, you know, add me on Instagram or Twitter, you know, send me a message. And if I'm into it, you know, then, you know, I'll let you know. I don't, it's just like I was telling you earlier, it's something that, you know, it just grabs you. It's got to be something that just pulls you in. Yeah, yeah. Um, we do have a question. Uh, someone asked, at what what point should someone seek out a publicist, Jonathan? Uh, when they want to start getting press. Okay. And when they have a, you know, they have a story. Like a lot of people contact me, and they're like, you know, can you blast my music? No, I don't just blast your music. Like you got to come up with a strategy. You got to mm -hmm. come up with a story. You know, you got to come up with the angle, and then you got to come up with the pitch, because it all comes down to the journalist. Yeah. You know, so whenever you feel like you're ready for a story, you know, to get your story out there, that's when you should get a PR person. Wonderful. So it's all about branding and marketing, Jonathan, right? For sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And many people want to leave that out, Jonathan. Why do you think that is? Maybe they don't know much about it. Why? Why is that? What do you mean? I'm sorry about that. Um, a lot of artists skip over that. They 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 just concentrate on the music. But I look at even some of their CD covers. It's something they did. They didn't seek out the right graphic artists. Um, they didn't seek out even a marketing or branding plan or someone who could do that. Why do you think music artists, I guess in the beginning, forget about that aspect of it? They want to skip over the marketing and branding aspect of the business. You know, it's just, it's just inexperienced. Like everybody, you know, it's a Snapchat world. Everything goes so fast with mm -hmm. social media. So it's just, it's just speed, wanting to rush it and get it done. Like this project that I'm doing now, even the fact that it's going to come out on October 13th, mm -hmm. that's crazy. You know, and mm -hmm. they're like speed, speed, speed. And it's just like, oh my gosh, stop. <laughs> you know, so people are going way too fast. Build your infrastructure, mm -hmm. build your team, come up with a plan, you know, get your resources in order, and then. 
do it just like you run a business. Gotcha. Any other business. Wonderful. Is there anything else you want to add, Jonathan, or tell our entertainers, our music artists out there on how to break into this industry? I mean, it's just it, it's just tough. It always comes back to that. It always comes back to that story, and then you know the execution of the story. Wonderful, Jonathan. Someone is saying, "Let's see." It says, "Hi, Jonathan. Thank you for allowing my awesome oh sister to interview you. <laughs> my sister is on the line. <laughs> Thank you, Dion. <laughs> now, Jonathan, do you have any sisters or brothers? I do. Younger sister is about to give birth on October. Wow. She's her first child. She's, she's helped raise pretty much, you know, um, my 15 year old. She's amazing. Then I have a younger brother and then I have an older brother. And then, <laughs> because I was adopted, you know, and I've just reconnected with my biological family recently, Ooh. I have biolo biological siblings. So it's like all crazy. You have too many, you know? Yeah. Jonathan. Too many. <laughs> no, that's wonderful. I love your story, Jonathan. You think it's too many? No, it's not. <laughs> well, no, large families are wonderful, and that's that's wonderful. And you know what, Jonathan? Don't I don't mean to get into your personal business, but I did not know you were adopted. And there are some people out there who they feel a void or whatever because they were adopted or whatever. But look at you. You are proof positive that it doesn't matter how you got here. It was a purpose, and you're you're successful. So it doesn't matter if you're adopted. You were bo you. None of that matters when God has purpose for you. And look at you. You're 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 doing it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> now, and I just reunited. I just reunited with them. Ooh. You know, within the last, within the last two years, and then I just met my biological mother for the first time uh, in February. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that, you know, that's when it brought us, like, I looked my whole life and, you know, then someone, um, you know, someone who was, you know, very, very persistent in finding my, you know, birth parents, you know, found my birth parents, she worked, like, you know, all day and all night to find them. And it was crazy, like, the first time I talked to this, this woman, she was like, I'm going to find your Birthday. Mm. And I'm like, no, then I'm going to find your mother. Okay. And I'm thinking, okay, whatever. But okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, I know you will. You know, and she did. And I mean, and, she, you know, it's crazy. It's been a, it's been a crazy situation. Wow, that is amazing. Jonathan, your story should be told because, I mean, it is being told, but there's so much more to you than meets the eye. So we've got to look into an article in my magazine about you. How about that? Oh, that's sweet. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay, we have one more question, Jonathan, and I think we touched on this before, but someone is asking if you have another. Do you have time to ask, ask answer one more question? Sure, no doubt. <laughs> okay, it says, what was and still is your motivation with the changing industry to stay focused and continuing moving forward? I, I mean, just, it's kind of cool because the, the position that I'm in, mm -hmm. it's like I do like a lot of online, like, you know, like now it's all online. Like everything is like, you know, Rolling Stone Magazine, you know, was just sold and, you know, print publications are dying, and because the website and the internet is like taking over, mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of like the lane that I've been in. Like I was like one of the early people to really see that, you know. But I love keeping up with all the trends and all the changes, and that's why it's always good to see, you know, um, have younger people on your team who are really connected with, you know, the different social media apps that come out so you can stay on top of it. You know, and figuring that out. Like, now, like, it's such a streaming world. You know, like, everything is being streamed. So mm -hmm. everything is on your phone, you know, connected to your Bluetooth. So, I mean, it's amazing. Like, their music business right now is amazing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, Jonathan, it has been such a pleasure to have you on the show. I so appreciate this. Like I said, when I first contacted you, I, I asked you about an interview and then when I went to read about you, I was like, I was like really blown away. And so for you to take out this time is such an honor. I appreciate it. 
And I appreciate it, too. Thank you so much. Yeah. Jonathan, can I do one thing before we leave? Sure. Can I pray for you and pray over your music industry, your family, and all that good stuff that's coming up for you? Thank you. Yeah, I love that. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of Jonathan Hay. We thank you for his insight, his wisdom, and giving him the witty inventions that you would have him to, Lord, create, to catapult artists into their purpose. Father God, I just ask you to continue to protect him and his family, even with the reunion with his biological family. I thank you that it will be an amazing experience and continue to be an amazing experience for Jonathan. God, enlarge his territory for your glory and let him tap into, Father God, the anointing and the, even the ministry that you have for him in this industry, Father God. Father, I just ask you to continue to speak to his heart, Father, and let him, Lord, even promote the positive music that our young people need, that they will know who you are, even in their daily lives, God. Let the music and the message that Jonathan brings, God, be a blessing to them, God, and a blessing to our world. Continue to meet his every need according to your riches and glory, and God, continue to uphold him, God. Keep him from hurt, harm, and danger. Order his steps in your word and God, let your heavenly angels continue to move wherever he goes to Lord God, keep him in your purpose. In your name we pray. Amen.